It was so cool yesterday doing the uh, Pat McGee project and turning you on to that. And then uh, I was forwarded uh, this video that I never had even seen before, which um, I was absolutely tickled to death to see this. So I, I have plans for another video today. Um, but th uh, this came up, I found this in the wee hours of the morning and thought I would share it with you as like a little continuum from yesterday's video. Um, it, it was cool. I, I, you know, it's fun. I, there's, I've done a couple of projects where they actually did this kind of a, uh, a you know, like a documentation of, of the process. So rather than talking about it, let me just go ahead and show you this. This is really great. So yesterday's Pat McGee album. Check this out. You know, number one, this is a, a kind of an anomaly in this day and age to actually have a band together in a studio, yeah. a real studio, especially cutting to tape. Um, I end up only doing a few of these a year like this, and it is a treat when we get to do this because it really harkens back to the old days where this was the norm rather than the exception. So there I was at a friend's house, and much to my surprise and the listening bliss, they were playing an entire CD by an artist. I thought that was pretty bold in today's casual listening atmosphere of digital playlists and iPods and such. It was then revealed to me that they were in fact spinning vinyl. A major light bulb went on for me. You never walked away. I went out the very next day and picked up a record player as well as the very same albums that so heavily influenced my musical career. In just a few weeks, I knew exactly what I wanted my 10th record to sound, feel, and look like. This wasn't gonna be a tribute, a throwback, or a nostalgia project. The songs for the first time in 20 years were written solely by me, and I never felt so true to my influences. So when I first set out with my co-producers, Kit Carlson and Chip Johnson, to find the right band to record this batch of tunes. I felt like I just needed the right drummer to make the music seem cemented in the pocket. That same kind of pocket I was hearing on all those classic albums that just seemed to make the music float. I couldn't have dreamt of what would happen next. In the summer of 2014, I found myself recording my songs in a legendary studio out in Los Angeles with the same players that created those iconic sounds of the early 70s and well beyond. I had Russ Kunkel on drums and percussion, Leland Sklar on bass, Wadi Wachtel, Danny Korchmar, and Jeff Pivar, all on guitars and lap steel. I also brought John Red Redling on B3 organ to be the glue on the project. I don't want this to end. Yeah. I, uh, it, it dawned on me that we're halfway done and I'm depressed about it. <laughs> I want to keep going. Yeah, I like uh, I like Pat's writing a lot. Man. He's got uh, some of these tunes remind me of uh, will be and I hope to be country smash tunes. I mean, there's some really solid, solid choruses on these tunes. He's he's number one in my book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't just that they agreed to do it; it was that they gave their heart and soul to the music in a creative way that only they can do. It's something that is second nature to these guys. The process was simple. I would play them my song, and minutes later we recorded live to two inch tape. It was never more than two or three takes, and then we were on to the next song. It was exhilarating and relaxing all in the same moment. The creativity was on maximum at all times. I'm having a blast, I mean, you know, I've, I've had the great fortune of working with Russ and Lee in the past, but I've never played with Wadi before, so I've uh, been a big fan of his work for a long time. So that's really fun to uh, get a chance to play guitar with him. Of course, Pat is, you know, uh, I don't know, it, he has that quality of, of writing songs that, you know, you feel like you've heard them before, but he has a unique twist and he's got such a beautiful voice. And, you know, the fact that he's assembled all of us together, it's a real honor for me to just be a part of this. Past music, I, I love it. I, um, 
it's really unique in so many ways. I mean, it sounds like it's something comfortable, like it, you are, are immediately drawn to it. It feels like classic music that you've always loved, but it's brand new. And because of the organic buzz around this album, I was able to enlist some incredibly gifted guests, including Paul Barrera of Little Feet. I mean, Little Feet was my very first concert. I couldn't believe he was on this project. John Popper of Blues Traveler, a longtime supporter, and Pat Monahan of Train, one of my oldest touring comrades. Gabe Witcher of Punch Brothers and Matt Menefee from Bruce Hornsby's band, they also joined in. While recording the vocals back in Sweet Virginia at Bias, the same studio I worked on my very first recording, it felt like a revolving door of talented friends as they passed through the DC area while touring. At PMB's Al Walsh, Bobby and Hank of the Blue Dogs, Colby James, Tony Luca, Emily Hearn, even my brother Hugh, they all added to the powerhouse core backing vocals on this album from Jonathan Brian Williams and Patrick McAloon. Michael Geegan put his signature horns on there as well. The lyrical content on this album is very personal to me. It ranges from moving tributes to a friend of mine who passed away, to marriage, to the birth of my son, my new home state of Rhode Island, bad choices and depression, courageousness, and carefree childhood memories. I even worked the family car into the album, the 1982 Chevrolet Chevette. So this entire project was a real return to my roots. I got to use my original graphic designer, Dan Schumann, for the CD and double vinyl packaging to showcase the killer art of Monty Montgomery. In Pat McGee Band, I experienced nearly 20 years of mind-blowing support from fans. I had concrete friendships and the highest musicianship anyone could ask for. So playing with these monsters of recorded and live music felt somehow strangely familiar. And at the same time, like I'd won the lottery. Kickstarter fans kicked in big time to make this whole thing a reality. So to them, I'm forever grateful. This is my 10th album and I'm feeling like I'm just getting started. I'm a proud husband and father of four beautiful children. I've played over 4,000 shows in 48 states on four continents. I even landed on an aircraft carrier in the Middle East to rock for the Navy. I got to perform for the president. I've met and jammed with many of my musical heroes. PMB thrived in the indie world. And as well, we were torn through the major label ringer. I've changed managers and agents countless times. This album somehow feels different. And it sure is one hell of a way to kick off a career. I hope you dig it. Rushes out to sit still Free fall against a will Staring out At the peak This song here is another example of This would be like a smash country song, I think. There's a lot of them he's got. Really strong choruses. Each one of these choruses comes out like a motherfucker. Right? It's good. Yeah, it's beautiful. That's how it's done. When it's done right, it's it's that organic, it's that beautiful feeling of a bunch of really talented people together in a room and uh, and making great music. Man, I love this so much. I was so thrilled when I saw this because um, yesterday when I did the um, my kind of tribute to, to Pat's album, I was closing my eyes and that's exactly what I saw. That setup in the room, that studio, that energy and everything. So um, really cool, really cool. So this was just like, a this is a, just a little, little nugget to throw in today. I've got another thing planned and I will have that up a little in a little while. And today we're doing the uh, Billy Cobham webinar at noon here. 
and I've got a thing before that, and uh, there's a bunch of stuff going on today. So um, I was glad to grab this one bright and early here, and uh, I will send it off to you now and wish everybody a great day, and I will see you soon, and I have a little something to tell you that's really interesting. Um, I'll, I'll save it for the, uh, for the official daily video. So take good care, and I'll see you in a bit.